this video, we are going to walk through the process of setting up Kubernetes in Hetzner Cloud. Hetzner Cloud is highly popular among cloud enthusiasts and for good reason. It's affordable, it's straightforward to use, and it boasts an impressive API which comes in handy for integrating with various tools like Terraform. So it's the perfect foundation for your cloud computing needs. But it's worth mentioning that as of now, Hetzner does not provide a managed Kubernetes service. However, that's not a roadblock because there are tools from the Hetzner Cloud GitHub project that make it easier for you to set up and use Kubernetes in Hetzner Cloud. So today we're going to use a couple of these tools together with Terraform and Kubespray to get a production ready Kubernetes cluster up and running in Hetzner Cloud. The first useful project we'll make use of today is the Hetzner Cloud Controller Manager, which integrates your Kubernetes cluster with the Hetzner Cloud API. It allows you to do things like use Hetzner Cloud private networks for your pod's traffic, as well as use Hetzner Cloud load balancers with Kubernetes services. The second tool is the Hetzner Cloud CSI driver, which enables creation of Hetzner Cloud storage volumes directly by creating persistent volume claims in Kubernetes. We're going to see how to set up and configure these tools later on in the video, but first things first, we do need to set up first a Kubernetes cluster. And even before we do that, we need to build the infrastructure where we will deploy Kubernetes. In the Hesna Cloud console, you can create a new project just like I have done here with the Kubernetes project. You can see it is an empty project with no resources provisioned yet. Then we can use Terraform, an infrastructure as code tool, to deploy our infrastructure. First, we'll create our project directory and then a Terraform directory. So you can also try and reproduce this in your own environment. I will have the GitHub project linked in the description below with all the documentation, code, and commands for this project. In this directory, we are creating a provider.tf file that will tell Terraform how to talk to the Hetzner Cloud. In this file, we set a provider named hcloud and set the provider token to a variable named hcloud API token. We then set our hcloud provider as one of the project's required providers. The source of the plugin as well as the required version of the plugin are also defined. Remember, you will need to generate a Hetzner Cloud API token first. To generate an API token, navigate over to your project in Hetzner Cloud, click on the security tab and then under API tokens, you can click generate API token. You can give your token a name and read write permissions. Serve the token to an environment variable called tfvar hcloud API token for this to work. Terraform automatically loads variables prefixed with tfvar into our project. Also, be sure to keep a copy of the token somewhere safe as anyone with this token will be able to access your Hetzner Cloud. Before using any variables in Terraform, we need to declare them first and we can do this in a variables.tf file. Here, we declare the hcloud API token variable with a type of string and set sensitive to true so that the API token is not displayed in logs or outputs. Once our provider is set up, we initialize our project with Terraform init. Terraform will download the required provider plugins based on our Terraform provider.tf file. Let's move on to building our infrastructure code in a main.tf file. Here, we define a jump server that we'll use as a base to manage all the other servers in the project. We're going for a Debian 12 image on a CX11 server type for this one. You can check out the Hetzner website for a list of all the server types, including the exact specs and estimated monthly pricing. So you can easily change this to a server type of your choosing. You can also refer to the Hetzner website for a list of the data centers and their codes. Here we'll go for the HEL1DC2, which is a data center located in Finland. We set the SSH keys to enable secure passwordless logins to our servers. Not to worry, we will define the my SSH key at the end of this file. We also disable provisioning of an IPv6 address. And for the private network configuration, we attach the server to the Kubernetes node network, which we'll define shortly and assign a private IP address for the server. The depends on block makes sure that the Kubernetes node subnet is already provisioned before the server is provisioned. Note that it is important to set the depends on block, otherwise if the server is provisioned before the subnet is, Terraform will try to create the subnet 
which will of course result in a conflict when the actual subnet is being provisioned. Next, we set up a group of servers which we'll name cube nodes. We'll have three of these, each configured similarly to the jump server, but with a little more power under the hood, CX21 server type to be precise. And then now we can define the private network and subnet from where they'll connect and communicate with each other. And finally, we will define the my SSH key, SSH key and set the public key value to a variable named my SSH key. We'll also need to add this new variable in our variables file. And then to set its value, we create a terraform.tfs file and set the value of the my SSH key variable. Just like the Hetzner Cloud API token, keep this file safe as it contains sensitive data and avoid including it in project code when sharing it or pushing to a Git repository. Before we deploy this setup to Hetzner, let's define some outputs in an outputs.tf file. This will help us keep track of the IPs of our cube nodes for use later on during the Kubernetes setup. And now it is time to deploy. First, we run Terraform plan to check that everything looks good. Then we use Terraform apply to deploy the infrastructure. We can check the Hetzner Cloud console and we can see our servers have been provisioned. We can also check the networks and the subnets that have been provisioned alongside the servers. All right, now that we have our infrastructure deployed, let's log into our Jump server, generate a new set of SSH keys and add them to our Terraform setup. The generated SSH public key will be saved under this path. We can copy it and set it as a value of jump server ssh key in terraform.tfvars. Don't forget to declare this new variable in our variables file. Then in main.tf, we'll create a new ssh key called jump server ssh key and add it to the list of ssh keys in the cube node servers. This will allow us to log into our cube nodes from the jump server. Finally, we redeploy our infrastructure with the updated SSH keys using Terraform apply. In the Hesna Cloud Console, you can also check the SSH keys tab under security, which lists all the keys that have been added. So now we have a fully deployed infrastructure in Hetzner Cloud. We have set up three servers which will serve as nodes for our Kubernetes cluster. We have also set up a jump server and made sure that we can access the Kubernetes node servers from it. This will enable us to easily set up and manage the Kubernetes cluster. So now we are ready to start deploying Kubernetes. We'll be using KubeSpray to deploy Kubernetes. KubeSpray is an awesome tool that makes setting up Kubernetes clusters a breeze. If you'd like to go into more detail on how to use KubeSpray to deploy Kubernetes, you can check out my Kubernetes at home video. I'll have that linked up here as well as in the description below. First thing we need to do is to log into our Jump server and create the project directory. Once inside of the Kube setup directory, we're going to clone the KubeSpray project In order to use KubeSpray, we'll need to have Ansible installed on our Jump server. Ansible is the driving force behind KubeSpray, allowing us to automate our Kubernetes setup. We will install Ansible using a Python virtual environment. So we can set up a virtual environment using Python's built-in virtual environment module and install Ansible according to the KubeSpray Ansible installation guide. You can simply use these commands to do it. Note that you might need to install the Python virtual env module if not already installed. After ensuring that we have the Python virtual env package installed, we can now create a new Python virtual environment and activate it. We can then move into the kubespray directory and use pip install to install Ansible along with all the other required dependencies listed in the requirements file. We are now ready to start preparing our necessary files. We'll first create the cluster configuration directory. Think of this as a place to store our Kubernetes cluster configurations. Next up, we will generate the inventory file. This file keeps track of all the IP addresses of our nodes. First, we declare an array named IPs containing the private IP addresses of our cube node servers. We then run this command, which uses the IP information provided 
and generates an inventory file at the path we specify. The generated host.yaml file will use the default kubespring naming convention of node 1, node 2 and so forth. So we need to update our host.yaml file to match our server names in Hetzner. This step is important for the Edge Cloud Controller Manager to recognize the Kubernetes nodes as it will be checking them against the actual Hetzner server names. So please make sure that your Kubernetes node names match the Hetzner server names. Once we have our inventory sorted out, we'll create a custom configuration file for our Kubernetes cluster. Here we are telling Kubespray that we are using Hetzner Cloud as an external cloud provider. This will also tell Kubespray to install and configure Edge Cloud Controller Manager as part of the Kubernetes setup. And then under the external Edge Cloud section, we will set the secret name where the Hetzner Cloud API token will be stored. We set with networks to true because we would like to leverage the underlying Hetzner Cloud private network for port traffic. This will relieve the networking load on our Kubernetes cluster. The service account name will be the service account which will be granted permissions to the Kube API enabling the Edge Cloud Controller Manager to interact with Kubernetes. Then we set the actual Edge Cloud API token and the controller image tag. Please be sure to check out the Edge Cloud Controller Manager for the right version to use depending on the Kubernetes version you wish to deploy. We set the Kube Network plugin to Cilium, which at the time of this recording is the network plugin that has been tested and works well with the Hetzner Cloud networks. I did run into some issues while using the default Calico network plugin, so be sure to change this setting to Cilium. And finally, we will set the value of the private network that will be used for pod traffic. With our config setup, it's time to deploy our Kubernetes cluster. We will run this Ansible playbook command to deploy the cluster. The command applies the cluster.yaml playbook and we also supply our inventory and cluster configuration files to the command. This stage will take some time to complete depending on the size of the cluster that you are creating and the resources available on each node. So grab a coffee and relax as Kubespray does its thing. If all goes well, you should see that the deployment has completed successfully from the Ansible Play recap. And at this point, our cluster should be up and running. Once our cluster is up and running, we can install kubectl using these commands so that we can interact with our cluster directly from our jump server. Then we'll copy the kubectl file from one of our control plane nodes to our jump server. This is the file that tells kubectl how to connect to our Kubernetes cluster. After that, we'll make a quick edit to the file and set the IP address to our control plane node. We can then test out our connection to the cluster by running a kubectl get nodes. And just like that, we are talking to our new Kubernetes cluster. Let's verify that Edge Cloud Controller Manager is installed and it's up and running. We will do this by using some simple kubectl commands. We can check that the pods are running with kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace. We can also check the logs with kubectl logs to display logs for our controller manager and make sure there aren't any errors. Next up, we're going to put our controller manager to the test by deploying an example app. To do this, we'll create and apply a deployment and a service manifest. In our app, we're deploying a single instance of an Nginx server. You'll also notice we're setting some service annotations that are important for our Hetzner load balancer setup. We set the location to match the location where our servers are deployed. We also set disable private ingress and use private IP to true to make sure that the load balancer uses the private IP address. Not including these particular annotations can result in an unhealthy load balancer. We can also provide the name of the load balancer. This can be useful if we have already provisioned a load balancer in the Hetzner Cloud console and wish to use it for multiple services. If the load balancer does not already exist, it will be created. Keep in mind that deleting the service will also delete the load balancer. So you might want to enable deletion protection on the load balancer so that Edge Cloud Controller Manager will just keep deleting it when the associated service is deleted. Once we've got our manifest created, we'll use kubectl to apply it to our cluster and verify that our pods and services are set up correctly. With luck, we'll see that our new web app is up and running. You can also check for the newly created load balancer in the Hetzner Cloud console. 
setting the load balancer annotations can become tedious to do or even easy to forget to do every time we create a service. We might also deploy a lot of applications with package managers like Helm and this would require remembering to always set the annotations in the values file for each Helm deployment. So we might want to set some of these options as defaults for our load balancer so that we don't have to include all of these annotations on each and every service we create. To do this, we'll create a config map that holds our preferred settings. After creating our config map, we'll apply it to our cluster. We'll then edit the HCloud controller manager demo set to use the settings from our new config map. We can add an end from section just below the end section to tell Edge Cloud Controller Manager to use the additional environment variables contained in the Edge Cloud Controller Manager extra end config map. We can verify with kubectl get pods which shows that the pods have just been restarted with a new configuration. We can also describe the daemon set and here we can see the config map being utilized. We can then delete our web app service and recreate it without the annotations. Running a kubectl get service will show us that the service type load balancer has been successfully created and an external IP address has been assigned. We can also verify in the console that a load balancer has been created and is in the healthy state. Let's finish strong with our third part where we'll take a look at the container storage interface driver for Hetzner Cloud. First, we need to create a secret that contains our Hetzner Cloud API token. This token will be used by the CSI driver, allowing it to interact with our Hetzner Cloud resources. Once we have our secret in place, we are ready to apply the CSI driver manifest. It is as simple as running a single kubectl command. Now, after installing the driver, it's time to check our work. We'll take a peek at our pods and the storage classes available. Hopefully, we should see the new CSI driver pod running smoothly and our Edge Cloud volume storage class ready to go. And now for the real test, let's see the CSI driver in action. We'll do this by creating a persistent volume claim and a pod that uses that volume. We're going to use a simple example manifest to create a PVC and a pod that uses it. The PVC will be backed by our Edge Cloud volume storage class and the pod will be a simple busybox container that does nothing but sleep. Once we have written our manifest, we'll apply it using kubectl and verify that our pod and PVC have been created successfully. Then we can also exec into our pod and run the df command just to make sure that our volume was mounted correctly. We can also verify that a volume has been created in the Hetzner Cloud console under volumes. So hopefully after this video, you have all the resources you need to set up a full Kubernetes cluster complete with networking, load balancers, and managed storage in Hetzner Cloud. Don't forget to check out the Git project in the description below with all the documentation, the code, and the commands that we used in this project today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing. I will see you in the next one.